welcome back. This week we are looking at Somerset Mom and his books, and we actually review the film. Uh, today we're going to look at actually Somerset Mom, his life. And uh, Ruben um, has done a lot more studying than I have of Mom, although I just am intrigued by this guy, and I hopefully you have as well. And, and we'll start reading some of these books. Uh, Ruben, though, regarding Somerset Mom, is there something about him that not many people know about, or uh, maybe something uh, intriguing that we haven't talked about during this week? There's a few things. I think his bi biography is very interesting. You can look at his life and um, get a lot out of it. Um, he was a because he was such a learned man. Mm. He was born in France, so he was bullied as a child because not only did he stutter and stammer, he uh, had an accent and didn't know English well because French, I believe, was his first language. So he knew French, English, uh, of course, and then he uh, began to study German and then eventually Russian. What better <laughs> target to work as a spy than Somerset Mom? Because his travels led himself to his studies. You know, he wrote the Painted Veil. He did a little traveling to China in his in his uh, research for the Painted Veil, and so. Um, he became a spy during World War II, and he escaped within a few minutes of his life as the Nazis came into his uh, onto his estate in Italy and destroyed his home, and he narrowly escaped. Um, they were on to him, perhaps, but uh, what a biography. What a life. I mean, this guy survived um, to live to talk about the Kennedy assassination. And he was born during the Victorian age. I mean, <laughs> and look at all he lived, you know, I think he was born in 1876. Yeah. So this guy um, had a biography, but he was also uh, such an intriguing wit and a writer. So he, he wrote all these great plays and novels, but um, he also wrote some good short stories. And um, he wrote the uh, Ashenden series, which is about a spy. <laughs> And um, that inspired the James Bond um, series. They were very popular. The oh, Ashenden right. stories were really were so. Um, but how, those but are a few things. looking at at uh, when as I've read these read these books, Ruben, um, th what stands out to me is, is the women in the book. He's obviously not a woman, but why do you think he wrote women so well, though? I think it's because he wrote people well. I think he understood people very well, and he was a keen observer. Um, hmm. I will say that this um, this man sat down and wrote in a notebook. Now, um, I write in a notebook, right? I, I try to follow that right. sort of idea because I went to school for creative writing, and mm. and they taught us to write, walk around with a notebook because you 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 know you'll have ideas yeah. and you'll forget them, so just you know sc scrawl them down. Well, he used to do that from the time he became. Um, a medical student and had that desire growing in him to be a writer, he would write down what he saw in medical school and that included women. And, and yeah, he is a keen observer of human behavior. Yeah. And when you, I've said this in another video that, um, you know, when I was, I feel bad for knocking Colleen Hoover so badly. And, <laughs> and somebody mentioned in the Facebook, yeah. I think it was Ozzy. <laughs> hey, at least people are reading, you know, yeah. it's true, but good point. I mentioned that psychological insight is what I read for. I'm not saying that it's not entertainment. I also read for, but to me, psychological insight is entertaining, right? Yeah. When you read these characters that you feel like, you know, or you feel like somebody you know is like them. Like you, you realize that you know somebody in this book. Yeah. Um, so, well, uh, when, you, when you're talking about, you know, you you know these he gets to know these characters. He he studies them. You um you mentioned that he he's always writing, but um writing notes to himself. This this book that we read this week called Cake, or at least we reviewed this week uh, of Cake and, and uh, Cakes and Ale. And there's this character that most people would say this is Thomas Harding, right? This Dryfield character. Um, and we talked about how this was not a very complimentary book towards Hardy, and Hardy was. Um, I don't want to call him. He was very well respected. Let's just say that. What do you think, Ruben? Do you, do you compare, like, if you compare Mom and Hardy? Hardy was a little bit before him, but he did live through um, part of his life. How, how, how is the comparison? Do you think they're about 
they're in the same league or do you think they're different i mean i'm not going to pick one or the other because um Mm. some people will will say hey what do you mean um uh, i will say they're they're um I mean, we pick up mom and right. he'll go, he'll go pages talking about the marshes and the meadows. And, and he had a, as you read him, you realize he had an idea about, um, he had a kind of a conservative slap to him in some ways where he, he didn't like the new technology and the new inventions that were going on and the, and mm. the cities were, were taking over Exploring. and he wanted to go back to the country in a way. He he really explores that. I remember Tess of the Durbervilles, where eh, the opening where he talks about the maids milking cows, and it's just like uh, I could do I could do without this passage. Mom would never write about any of that. Mom <laughs> was a city guy, and mm-hmm. he would talk about the characters, and he he rushed into it. I will say, if you if I were to compare them, the great characters, mm-hmm. the great characters. If you if you read Mayor of Casterbridge. What better character in literature is the mayor? <laughs> Who it I mean, you can yeah. talk about Jean Valjean. <laughs> to me, I put that I, I would it would be an interesting uh, episode if we talked about great characters in literature. Nobody talks about the mayor, but it would it would be in my yeah. list. Um and then but a knock on him maybe is how many other characters in that book stand out? Mm. Not many. Uh, but on the other hand, mom, we just talked about a human bondage. Look at all the characters. So many. Um, if, even if you talk about Painted Veil, uh, I'm forgetting the character who who is the ser- um, the servant, maybe not the servant, but- um, Is it the British? The um... British uh, in China. Yeah. He is a character and he's always drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um... Not just Kitty, but Kitty is big. So yeah, those that's how I compare. They're both great. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking like, you know, how we like the Dodgers. Maybe like you think one baseball player is better than another one, but I guess you can't really do it. That's not too. It's not so fair in, in the literary. Um, mom realm. would tell you. Mom would tell you not to read Hardy or that he was boring. But <laughs> right. I didn't think you know. I, I like Hardy, but I I, I love Mom. Um, I'll say this. Uh, well, let's talk about just to finish up about. Um, How's mom influenced your teaching, or if he has, or or maybe even his? Um, how's reading mom really has uh, affected your teaching, or has it? I I think that um, it's I like the direct style of his writing. He tells you, he speaks to you, even when he's speaking in third person, hmm. uh, right? A human bondage is in third person, but he allows the characters. He gives a slice of his of his personality in Clutton, in um, uh, the other guy, the other maybe even in Foynet, the art teacher, mm-hmm. who destroys some of the art artists in his studio. Yeah. Um, some of that is mom yeah. being infused in those characters. So I think it's important to be direct as a teacher, um, mm. uh, to be respectful. Um, but to be direct, and of course, using some of the devices that mom used. Um, mm. When a student writes a story, I ask the question, how is this character different from that character? Even from, you know, some people, some adults have asked me to read their screenplays and things. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're, yeah, I ask that question, not because I know, but because I've read great, like I've read mom. And I yeah. see that even though you have five artists in a studio they're so distinct aren't they yeah i've human i keep coming back to a human bondage for that reason right wow thanks rube um appreciate that i mean i, I really appreciate this week i've um enjoyed these books and i, I haven't read razor's edge yet but i'm going to do that and um, um finishing painted veil right now because i uh, did read some of it but that's but i read the other books and they were just awesome and like i said before uh bondage of human bondage that's probably my top five for sure, one of my top five. So I, uh, we, by the way, I did mention that um, he put little, he scrawled notes and, and a little notebook, and he eventually published something titled "The Writer's Notebook," oh, wow. and that is just his musings. And it, when you read it, it you think, well, you know, what what's this about? Because there, it's random. But that's what you do. You write down ideas, and his ideas that are little dribs and drabs are better than most of 
people's ideas like mine, right? You're too hard on yourself. Yeah, and um, but you know he published, you know he curated it where he took out some things and kept others. Sure. So, uh, but man, some of them, if you like pithy sayings, um, you know, little, right, you know, like little, uh, you can't see it, but he has like these little pithy sayings here and there about life, you know, and uh, you'll like this. Uh, how about this one? People continually ruin their lives by persisting in actions against which their sensations rebel. You might not agree with everything he says, but these ideas come out just as, you know, this is the business of writing. And from this, you might get a character. Mm. And, and there's a moment where he travels to Russia and he describes Dostoevsky. And, and those are the longer passages. Um, to me, it's worth the oh. price of the book because you get an idea of, of mom describing why Dostoevsky is good. And then he does it, he does it again for Tolstoy. Um, where he talks, it, uh, I will say this quickly. He mentions how in one of Tolstoy's stories, uh, mm -hmm. The Resurrection, how it's very interesting. He says, in one page, Tolstoy is able to describe three or four characters distinctly. He really praises Tolstoy for that. And mm -hmm. as I read that, I think, well, you do that too, mom. <laughs> you do that in your stories yeah. where you can describe two or three characters so well that uh, it's as if you know them. So excellent. Well, thank you for being uh, with us this week as we get into uh, Somerset mom and we uh, pulled out a lot of great stuff and we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everybody.